I'd like to show you how to grow pepper plants. There are four different pepper plants in front of me. All of them are sweet banana pepper plants. However, whether you grow a sweet or a hot pepper, the instructions in this video will be the same. Treat them the same way. It makes no difference what kind of pepper they are. When it comes to growing peppers, the first thing we need to discuss is spacing. You can see that I dug four holes here, counting down from one to four, and this is a raised bed that is four feet wide, and I've marked it off in one foot increments. So I have a hole in the center of each of these one foot increments. So I've discovered that peppers grow very well when given a full one square foot of growing space. So one square foot of space is more than enough to grow peppers. That means you can grow them fairly close together, which is great because you will get a high yield of peppers per square foot of garden. The other advantage is that when planted close together, they act as a windbreak for each other, which is beneficial because small pepper plants are delicate and susceptible to wine damage. Planting them closer together is therefore beneficial. The depth of your planting hole is the next topic we'll cover when growing peppers. Peppers benefit from being planted slightly deeper, not quite as deeply as tomatoes, but planting a pepper slightly deeper allows the pepper stems to send out a small amount of surface roots. As a result, it benefits from being planted at a deeper depth. So you can see my planting hole here. So if I take this pepper plant and place it in the hole, the top of the soil on the pepper plant should be one to two inches below the top of the soil flush with the garden. So I recess this one about an inch and a half to two inches deep. And that is ideal for growing a pepper plant. Let's talk about fertilizing our pepper plants now. I have three slow release fertilizers in front of me. I have a simple granulated organic fertilizer in the middle on the left. I'm eating bone meal. I also have Neptune harvest crab and lobster shell meal on the right. It is critical to use a slow release, granulated all-purpose organic fertilizer when planting your pepper plants. And you can see nature's care right here. Organic and natural tomato, vegetable and herb plant food. Normally, I use a simple, balanced, 5-5-5 all-purpose fertilizer when I plant tomatoes, peppers, or any other type of plant. It was, however, on a killer special and was a fantastic deal. So I went with this instead. The INP ratio is 7-6-9, indicating that it contains 7% nitrogen, 6% phosphorus, and 9% potassium nitrogen. Food will aid in the growth of your plant's leaves, stems, and leafy green growth. The phosphorus in the center encourages root development and fruiting. Cook is your potassium source when it comes to peppers, tomatoes, and other fruit-bearing fruits and vegetables. And that 9% potassium helps the plant's overall health because it is a precursor in cellular division. So instead of 555, I'm going with 769. So all of those numbers are relatively close together and fairly balanced. If it's close enough that all the numbers are roughly the same, that's all you really need. So it's not a big deal if they're off by a number two. Simply try to get as close to a five, five, five as possible. Following that, we have jobs, organic bone meal. And phosphorus is crucial in the early development of the roots of the plant you are planting. So I always like to dust my planting holes with bone meal because it promotes root growth right away. Then there's crab and lobster shell meal. And I'm a big fan of this stuff. It's made from crushed crab and lobster shells. It's less of an issue up north, but regardless of whether you have a nematode problem or not, it's a good thing to include because this will break down into a very slow release calcium source. So everything is fine. We're going to use a little less than a full scooper for our crab and lobster shell meal. So roughly one tablespoon of that, then we'll take our bone meal and divide it among ourselves using less than one scooper. So approximately a tablespoon of that as well. So once again, one tablespoon of bone meal, one tablespoon of crab and lobster shell meal, and two tablespoons of all-purpose fertilizer. 
That amounts to roughly two parts all-purpose fertilizer to one part crab and lobster shell meal and one part bone meal. And now that we've applied our slow-release fertilizers, we're going to do a test and stir them around a little bit in that planting hole to mix them all up. Then we'll take our pepper plant and remove the tag. We will gently squeeze the container, not too hard, but just enough to get it moving. Then we'll all be moving in unison. If you turn it upside down, the pepper plant will pop right out. We're going to take the roots and fluff them very lightly to loosen them up a little bit. And then we'll plant it a little deeper in the planting hole. We're going to push the soil around the pepper plant and then press it down firmly but not too hard. We don't want to squeeze all of the air out of the soil, but we do want the pepper to be well seeded. In order for your plants to benefit from the nutrition, all of the bacteria, fungi, and tiny worms in your soil must consume and excrete all of the organic fertilizer. The nutrition is immediately available with all of these water-soluble fertilizers. So the first thing I'm going to use is this expert gardener plant food, which is a carbon copy of Miracle All-Purpose Grows Plant Food. So we're getting close to a 111 ratio. The nitrogen is not greater than the phosphorus, and because you're not using a high nitrogen fertilizer, you're giving it a 1 to 1 nitrogen to phosphorus ratio. You will not prefer leafy green growth to flowers and fruit. When you feed your plant a balanced fertilizer like this, it will produce roughly equal amounts of green growth, flowers, and fruit. That is what you want for a healthy plant in general. If you don't want to remember this, avoid using the all-purpose. Skip the high nitrogen plant food and just start with the miracle Grow tomato and only buy that. Another thing to keep in mind is that miracle Grow and most soluble fertilizers are not organic. If you want to be completely organic, you can skip the chemical soluble fertilizer step and only use Epsom salt, the fish motion, and the slow release. In terms of imp, it's not a particularly potent fertilizer. So at the very least, you should supplement it with an organic granulated fertilizer because it is insufficient on its own. However, it acts as a multivitamin for your plants and is excellent for preventing transplant shock. As a result, I strongly advise you to include it in every feeding. When it comes to chemical fertilizer, it's critical to read the instructions carefully because too much chemical fertilizer can burn the leaves and roots of your plant if you overdo it. Do not use colored mulch under any circumstances. Dyed mulch is typically made up of broken down pallets and really nasty wood that may contain a lot of chemicals and the dyes are also not good for your soil. You must ensure that this is a natural mulch such as pine bark mulch or all-natural shredded hardwood bark. And the benefit of doing so is that it keeps your roots cool and the soil moist, even if you don't cover your soil afterwards. What is the composition of your soil? It will be extremely wet, but it will dry quickly. Thank you so much for watching today's video, everyone. If you found it useful, please give it a thumbs up and click the like button. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel for future updates and more videos like these. If you're curious about anything I used in this video or in my garden in general, everything I use is linked in the video description to my Amazon storefront. Thank you all so much for watching and I hope to see all of you again on the next video.